This is actually the first live stream I've done. As you can see, the number is one. I already did an inaugural live stream. So this is actually the second live stream I've done, but I count the first one as zero. Because, you know, when you have a ruler, the ruler doesn't start with one. It starts at zero. So that's how I count things. So this is live stream one. And I've decided to just start talking about things. Um, and so what I'll talk about now is some of the history of the grammar technology that I teach. I am a correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar tutor. I've been teaching it for over five years since February of 2018 to hundreds of people uh, all over the earth who are interested in using it. It's a grammar technology that was brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Eiffelman Colin Miller, who passed away on the summer sol uh, solstice five years ago. Uh, and he used it after he, uh, he and his, I guess you could call him his student, Russell J. Gould, after they quote-unquote captured the 1 by 1.9 flag, and they commandeered that flag and made that the flag of the land or the time of the contract, the 1 by 1.9 Title IV flag, which is the flag you will see in the top port side corner of any correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal vessel court venue. So I found out about this grammar technology in 2017. And I began looking around for people to teach me. Anybody that I saw that had colons and hyphens in their names, I would reach out to them on whatever platform they were on and ask them to teach me. No one would do it. Later on, I find out it's a pretty good guess they couldn't do it because they didn't know it. Very few people actually know this technology and have closure on it. At least enough closure to teach someone else and give them closure on it. Very few people. A handful of people. I could probably count them on one hand. Anyways. So when I began learning it, it took me about 2,000 hours before I could even use it. And the first thing, I think the first claim that I did, and this is before I even knew what I was doing, I actually confronted a state tax entity using correct sentence structure. And this was in 2017, 2018, I think it was. Um, so what I did, I took their document, I syntaxed it, I commandeered it, and then I wrote a correct sentence structure communication to go along with it. I put a syntax key in there, bonded, maritime bonded the documents together, and sent it back to them. And basically the long and short of it is they were charging me all these penalties, interest, fees on top of the tax itself. So I thought, why not offer to contribute to the state? So they get, I gave them an offering. Like, I think I, I wrote them a check for like 30 bucks or something. And the rest of it, the rest of the fees came to like four times that. It was like 100 bucks in fees. I said, pretty much, you know, just to translate in plain English, I said, show me the correct contract where I agreed to pay anything about penalties and fees. I agree to help the state because I want to help everybody else. I want to help, you know, help pay for the wages of the people that work on the roads, work on the water pipes, so on and so forth. But penalties and fees and interest, that, that's not something that I agreed to do. And so they sent me back a letter saying, we're good, we're straight. And I was like, whoa, that, that is so cool that that had that effect on it. So then I started going on to uh, collection, ag collection agencies. I took a client on and it was a little bit harder doing it, you know, for someone else. And keep in mind, I didn't have closure on the grammar while I was doing this. I was like just doing it spontaneously, just testing it out because I had to know if it worked or if it didn't work. And it worked. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, the collection agency, the name of the collection agency was, I think it was called the National Collections Bureau. 
And I went through back and forth, four different correspondences with them. And then the postmaster personally came to my house and returned the last correspondence and said, here. I said, well, why are you sending it back? I sent it with the green card. They're supposed to sign it and then to, to let me know that they received it. They said, no, they're not there. I said, what do you mean they're not there? They said, the entity known as National Collections Bureau does not exist. The address you sent it to is vacant. There's no one in the building. There's no forwarding address. It just doesn't exist. I said, are you telling me that this entity vanished into thin air? And she just kind of shrugged her shoulders and said, yeah. It's like, whoa, that's crazy. And so that was the first thing that got me thinking, wow, this stuff is powerful. Now, you can't really prove like I can't really prove that it was because of quantum grammar that that entity disappeared. But what I can prove is that they stopped harassing my client. And um, I began doing classes with him. They weren't like structured classes. We began as friends. And we would talk about different things that were going on in his life and my that the fellow in the blue gown was reading in the court. So interesting little trivia for those of you who are interested in such things. So that's what got me started. That's what galvanized me to teach this. Because I had three goals when I learned it. Number one, of course, I wanted to get closure on it. Number two, I wanted to know it well enough to teach it. And number three, I wanted to write contract. I've achieved all of those goals. I got a pretty successful YouTube channel with over 600 videos over there. And I make all my knowledge available to the public. I don't hide anything. I don't keep the best stuff for people who pay or whatever. There's none of that. It's all on the YouTube channel if you want to learn it. And so I've started this TikTok to show little bite-sized portions of those videos from YouTube. And now I'm able to do these lives and go live and share some things. Uh, there are three elements to correct sentence structure communication, parse, syntax, grammar. There's correct sentence structure communication, parse, and syntax. The word grammar comes last because it is the authority of all the things that come before it. Authority comes at the end. That's why when you autograph a document, you always autograph at the end and nothing comes after your autograph. Because if something comes after your autograph, you haven't authorized it. Get it? Authorization author. That's how it works. Um, so let's see, those three elements. And you have to learn all three of them equally well. Because if you're going to tell someone else that they're using a fictitious conveyance of grammar, then you yourself better know how to create a correct conveyance of grammar. You have to know it well enough to teach it. And a lot of people, you know, say it's a bunch of hogwash and stuff like that, and that's fine, but these are people that don't know anything about it. I'm trying to speak to the people that are interested in it and do want to learn it. Like I'll go into right now, um, the elements of a correct sentence structure. Okay, there are 10 parts of speech on the correct sentence structure parts of uh, speech list and syntax key. Zero is conjunction, one is adverb, two is verb, three is adjective, four is pronoun, five is positional, six is lodial, seven is fact, eight is past tense, nine is future tense. Now, when you're syntaxing a fiction document, meaning you're showing the modification of the grammar, you would use one, two, three, four, zero, eight, and nine. And when you're syntax and correct sentence structure communication, you would use five, six, seven, two, and zero. It's that simple. One and threes are modifiers. Sentences in the fiction, when you're syntaxing them, would never end on an adverb or an adjective because those are modifiers and there's nothing left to modify. The syntax pattern would only end on a two or a four. If it ends on a two, that would be what is considered a dangling participle verb. 
Because what is a verb? A verb is thinking. And if you end a sentence on a verb, there's nothing left to think about. So it's just dangling there. That's why they call it that. So when you create a correct sentence structure, there's a certain positional sequencing that you have to use. In the parts of speech that I just mentioned, position, lodials, and facts. So positionals, there are four positionals, four of, with, and by. Lodials, I mean, there's all kinds of different words you can use as lodials, the being the most common one. And in facts, facts are facts, but they cannot have particles of negation in them. They cannot have modifiers in them. And a modifier would be like ing, ed, re at the beginning of the word, so on and so forth. But you would have to parse the words to know that. You'd have to put the work in to know that. So the basic, the, the shortest correct sentence structure you can have is four lines. Yeah. Well, there would be four position lodial fact phrases in one verb. You always start a sentence with a cause. Remember I said there are four positionals? The first positional is for, and the function of that positional is the cause of the sentence. You have to start it for the claim, right? That's the cause of the sentence. So if you say for the claimant's knowledge, okay, we'll say that. For the claimant's knowledge. Claimant's knowledge is the cause of the sentence. And then the next lodial would be, or the next position would be of. So for the claimant's knowledge of the facts. Two position lodial fact phrases. You need two points with which to draw a straight line. Those two position lodial fact phrases serve that function. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts. Now you've established your geometric level plane field of communication. Now you can drop your verb of the thinking in. There is one verb, is. And also the plural form of that verb, are. That would move the cause and concern, F-O-R being the cause, O-F, O-F being concern. Those are positionals, for and of. Now you move it into the possessive, with. With is the possessive function with the positionals. So you could say, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim, by the claimant. And then by the, by is the authority. For is cause, of is concern, with is possessive, by is authority. There's a reason for that. Because when you flip it, because this is a mathematical interface, just like one plus two equals three, three minus two equals one, you can check your math problem forwards and backwards the same way the sentence works. Remember we said for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim by the claimant. Backwards that would be for the claimant of the claim is with the facts by the claimant's knowledge. You see what I did there? For became by, of became with. Just like in one plus two equals three, three minus two equals one, the, minus, uh, the plus became the minus. And that's how you're able to flip it and the facts maintain the same value forwards as they do backwards. Just like one plus two equals three, three minus two equals one. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim by the claimant. For the claimant of the claim is with the facts by the claimant's knowledge, period. And that, in a nutshell, is how correct sentence structure works. That is the mathematical interface on grammar. I've just explained to you in 30 seconds the mathematical interface on grammar. Now, of course, it can get more complicated than that. You can have longer sentences, much longer sentences. But they will always start with two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb. They must always start with two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb. Otherwise, there will be no mathematical interface. It can't just be one, and it can't be more than two. It has to be two every single time. So you could say, uh, for the claimant's, for the claimant's sensation of the cognition is, with the correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by the claimant. Period. 
what I just told you, I just gave you closure as to where my knowledge comes from. It comes from my cognition of my senses. Because that's where claims come from. Knowledge can be argued. Sensation cannot. And it's my thought that that's why you will not find the word sensation anywhere in any edition of Black's Law Dictionary. Because they can't allow that to go into court. Because you can't argue a sensation. For example, say this is a cup of hot coffee and I dump it on my arm and I say, ow, that hurts. That burns. You can't say, no, it doesn't burn. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me what I'm sensing because you're not me. You can't make a claim for me. It's a claim of sensation. Five plus senses. Right? That's why you won't find, that's my guess on why you will not find that word in a Black's Law Dictionary. Because it can't be argued. Anything else can be argued in court but that. But then again, that's another people thing that people don't understand quite about how this stuff works in court. I had a guy tell me, it was a common law guy, tell me, he said, go ahead and try and use your punctuated name in, in a court of law, in a legal court, in a district court. They won't recognize it. Well, no shit, they won't recognize it. They're going to try and get you out of there as quick as they can. That's not how it works. If you really have closure on the grammar, you could go into that courtroom and commandeer the will of the court. Because that is what, what, that, what that 1 by 1.9 flag is on your document contract postal vessel court venue. It's the flag of the land during the time of the contract. There are certain mechanics you can do when you walk into that foreign vessel and dry dock. You void all the boxes and planes because you can see that the stenographer is on one level, the clerk is on another level, and then the judge is on the third master basin level with his little black dress on and whatever. You void that. You get rid of all the boxes. You, you void the modification and you commandeer it. And then you are the authority, some might say judge, of that space, that now space, because you are common, you are taking jurisdiction of the now space because you're the only one that knows how to do that. That's the long and short of it, but you have to know the grammar in order to do that. You have to know it so well that you can teach it to someone else on the spot. You can create it on the spot like you just heard me do a couple minutes ago. You can syntax on the spot. Um... Syntax is a whole nother thing. I just told you how to create a correct sentence structure. Parse, okay, I got to touch on that. Parse just basically means the parts of a word. So you can just pick up any etymology dictionary. Etymology online is a good way to do this. And just look up the syllables of a word and go back to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word. And then you'll find out where your particles of negation are, where your no contract words are. How do I learn this? Well, um, you can go to my bio on TikTok and you will find a link to my YouTube channel. There are over 600 videos of correct sentence structure over there. You can teach yourself uh, how to do that. Or you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. That email address is also in my bio and apply for a workshop. I do offer workshops I've been teaching this since February of 2018 I've taught hundreds of people um, I do one hour confidential workshops if you have any questions about that I will answer them if you email me that's the correct venue to answer those things because it is a confidential workshop and so therefore it would have to remain in the confidential this is a public platform therefore I wouldn't talk about it too much on here but if you're interested you can email me other than that all the knowledge that i have about correct sentence structure is available for free on my youtube channel over 600 videos and also on this tiktok channel of course i have wow i don't even know I, i've lost count of how many videos i put up on this on this uh, tiktok channel
Oh, yeah. And then coming up in July, I'm going to be putting on a webinar. It's going to be a correct sentence structure webinar. And if you're interested in uh, attending that, you can email me. Please include your correct name, your full correct name, so that I know who you are. You know who I am. You see my correct – well, actually, do you see my correct name? I guess the name of the channel is Cosmosity. My correct name is Colin Jason I from Matthew Colin Glass. You can call me Jason. I'm pretty sure that's in my bio as well. But I just ask that you include your correct name, and then you can get more details there. Also, go to my YouTube channel. Or maybe scroll back in the videos on my TikTok here. I also talk about the terms and conditions of the webinar. It's a $42 minimum donation to attend. If you want to attend. It's your choice. I've had people learn this stuff in one one-hour workshop. And I've had people take 20 workshops. And they still haven't learned it. So it just depends upon the student, how motivated they are, how fast they learn, how much they really want to learn this. It is definitely a commitment. As for the uses of this grammar, the main use is to stop bureaucratic trespass. Meaning if you feel you're being damaged by some entity that's trying to collect unjust fees from you. Uh, maybe they're trying to get value or money from you that you feel you don't owe them. It's good at stopping those types of things. As David Wynn Miller once said, it's like using a wrecking ball to swat a fly. But again, you know, I get emails from people that will say, Jason, can you help me with this case? I got a DUI. How do I get out of it? And my first question is, well, were you drinking and driving? Because correct sentence structure isn't going to help you if you are in the wrong. It's not, it's, and it's the mentality of getting out of something is not a correct mentality. It's not about getting out of anything. It's one thing David Wynn Miller taught me long ago was that never say no to something. Like, how can you say that? Like, he, and he would use like really funny uh, analogies, like not, not having to do a correct sentence structure, but just having to do with going into court and experimenting and saying things like, uh, how do you say that? I plead guilty to being innocent <laughs> or something goofy like that. I plead guilty to being innocent. So, well, do unto others as yourself. That is basically rule one, rule equal. We all came here the same way. We all came to this plane, this geometric level plane field, the same way. And we all leave the same way. We all put our pants on one leg at a time. We all go to the restroom the same way. That's rule one, rule equal. Now, people may have more skills and more intelligence than others, so on and so forth. But as human beings, it's always rule one, rule equal. And anyone who tries to hide things, classify things, they are trying to upset the rule one, rule equal, and try and gain an advantage. Correct sentence structure eliminates that, completely eliminates that. As they say, fair and square. It's all fair and square. When you know the grammar, that is. Like, for example, if you do... Uh, Quorento, and I don't use the word complaint because who wants to hear somebody complain? <clears throat> but if you do a quorento, like I've done a quorento where I will offer the other contract party three options. The first option is to show me 
the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, contract that I agreed to, which of course they can't. The second is to file a correct sentence structure quora rental of their own to show me where they have any authority over me at all. Or number three, to go on vacation, i.e. vacate the case. And so far over the last five years, 10 times out of 10, every single case I've had, the trespassing entity has gone on vacation. They vacate the premises. So let's see, what did I cover here? I covered how to create a correct sentence structure. I talked about how to parse words. Okay, the last thing, syntax. What is syntax? Syntax is basically how words work together to make sense to someone else, okay? With correct sentence structure, there are no modifiers. For example, adjectives and adverbs are modifiers. The fiction language is Full of them, full of modification. As David Wynn Miller said, uh, change is modification, modification is perjury. If you went into court and you said something that's a fact, and then you later modified that fact, now you've modified the facts, the fact is no longer a fact, it's something else. It's either a verb or a pronoun. So you've perjured yourself. This is the essence of correct sentence structure and why it works. Because you can prove language modification. You can prove fictitious conveyance of grammar. You can prove fraudulent conveyance of grammar. Now, there are levels to this, of course, uh, that you would step it up. Um, so with syntax... When you're syntaxing like a fiction babble sentence, like, uh, let's say, the baby walks, period, the baby walks. I'm going to syntax that sentence. The steps you would take to find the modification in that sentence, you start at the end of the sentence with talks. You would determine whether the word talks is a tangible contract word or a non-tangible contract word. And what I mean by that is, do you have a tangible contract with talk? I mean, I think you do because you're listening to me talk right now. We can certify that. How about baby? I think we can certify what a baby is. Now, how about the word the? Can you certify what a the is, the same way you can certify what a baby is, or what tox is. No, you can't. The is just three letters on a piece of paper. It doesn't have the same tangible quality as baby or tox. So then the would be considered non-tangible. Non-tangible contract words would either be adverbs, verbs, or pronouns. Non-tangible contract words would never be adjectives. Tangible contract words would either be Verbs, adjectives, or pronouns. They would never be adverbs. If you study this, this will all make sense to you later on down the road. I'm just trying to plant a seed, lay the foundation. So the baby walks, or the baby talks. Talks is tangible contract. It's preceded by another tangible contract word, baby, which is preceded by a non-tangible contract word, the. So the baby talks is adverb, adjective, pronoun. One, three, four. It's a little bit to, much to get into in just a little live stream here. But again, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, you can go over to my YouTube channel. Over 600 videos. Uh, there's a playlist for syntax with about 60 videos in it explaining how to syntax from the ground up, Right? A whole playlist. Same thing for parse. There's a parse playlist. There's a correct sentence structure playlist. Mini class playlists. So feel free to go over there and help yourself or email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Link in the bio there. 
And make sure you include your correct name, please. And you can apply for a workshop. And what will happen is I will email you back and offer you a 10 to 15 minute video consultation on the Zoom platform where you and I can sit across each other, from each other, see each other, witness each other. You can ask me whatever you want to, and we can see if this is something you want to do. And I'll give you all the details about how to attend the workshops. So... Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me. I can't really see how long I've gone here. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, Thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here, you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.